So let's go in the way back machine, and we're talking back thousands of years. There were, in the land of Canaan, uh, various tribes. There were Philistines and Canaanites, uh, Ammonites and Moabites and Edomites and all those. They had various tribal regions. And the Israelites moved from Egypt into what was considered the promised land in the Bible, into Canaan, and they took over the area uh, thousands of years ago. After Solomon, the it, it broke into two pieces, Judah and Israel. Israel over time began to be referred to as Samaria. If you the, the, the good Samaritan is from Samaria. That was the northern kingdom area. Uh, the northern kingdom collapsed first, and gosh, when I was in seminary, I had to memorize the dates, and now I've forgotten them. The northern kingdom uh, collapsed first, absorbed into uh, what the 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 um, Syrian Babylonian Empire. Uh, the, then the, the the Judah collapsed, eventually becoming it, it's part of the Persian Empire. This territory. Um, Cyrus allows them to come back and start rebuilding the temple. Over time, Alexander invades and creates his empire, the first of the major empires that that stretch across the the Western world. He dies. His empire is broken up into pieces. Judah is just a pawn in the war uh, between the various uh, leaders. Eventually, the Romans take it over, and it is called Judea. But the Jews are a very particular people, and the Romans had to grant them a great deal of autonomy because the Jews were willing to die for their God, and the Romans knew it. And so the Jews were given special exemptions in religious worship. Uh, they did not have to embrace the Roman gods. Uh, there was a, a Roman proconsul. Pilate was one of those. And ultimately, uh, due to a series of rebellious actions, um, the Romans surrounded it destroyed the the temple in in AD 70, and a lot of people fled. Well, they didn't really wipe it out, though. They became troublesome for the Roman emperors, and when Hadrian, who built Hadrian's Wall, became emperor, there was yet again another revolt, and he decided enough was enough. So in 135 AD, Hadrian changed the name of Judea to something you may have heard of, Palestine, Syria, Palestinia, that became referred to as Palestine. And those people who lived there, he threw all the Jews out of their territory. All the Jews were forced to go away, and the people who uh, were allowed to take up residence were called Palestinians. And the name has stuck ever since. There is no historic dispute that it was Israel, the northern and southern kingdom, uh, Judah, Judea, Samaria. They were the territory of Israel, and that's where the Jews lived. The Jews have had the the hardest life of any ethnic group on planet Earth, uh, repeatedly persecuted around the world, spread across the world as well, ruthlessly exterminated by the Nazis. After the Roman Empire fell, uh, it became part of the the Byzantine Empire and then the Ottoman Empire. Uh, Jews slowly over time began trickling back into the area. And after World War II, uh, really wanted to reestablish a territory for themselves. Through various wars and the like, the Jews have expanded uh, the territory of Israel, now Israelis and not Jews. The Palestinians claim some level of ownership here, but you've got to understand that historically, this has been the kingdom of Israel, this territory. So when when the left refers to Palestine, they are embracing the Roman persecution of the Jews, when they say Palestine. Uh, Palestinians were not a thing until the Romans threw them out, uh, threw the Jews out, by force no less. And by force continuously, uh, the Jews have been thrown out. Uh, You can tell there's, there's got to be something about the Jewish people and the Christian people, given how the world persecutes them. We're now at another conflict between Palestinians and Jews. Israel has been expanding its territory, and in expanding its territory, has moved into two two areas, Gaza and the West Bank. Gaza is a strip of land along the Mediterranean headed towards Egypt. The West Bank 
uh, is territory on the western side of the River Jordan. A lot of uh, international groups have disputed ownership uh, of that, have disputed um, Israel's ownership over time. The United States and others have largely acquiesced to the spread of um, Israel into parts of the West Bank, expanding expanding settlements there. Jerusalem has been the undisputed capital for the Israeli people since King David, because supposedly Muhammad appeared in a vision on uh, the, the um, at the where the Dome of the Rock is, where the temple is. The Muslims built the uh, what Al Aqsa Mosque there with the gold dome. They claim some connection to Muhammad there because of a dream or some such. But that's where the temple was built. That's where uh, God dwelt among the Jewish people. There's no historic dispute to any of this. Over time, the Palestinians who allied with the Soviets during the Cold War, built up a base of support among the left around the world. And there is a great deal of solidarity between left-wing Americans and the Palestinians who buy their persecution narrative. Now, here's something you need to understand. Palestinians were, by and large, pushed into surrounding countries as the Jews expand, as the Israelis now, I should say, expanded Israeli territory during the various wars with Arab nations. Those Arab nations, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and the like, they treated the Palestinians worse than the Israelis ever did. And they needed a uniting grievance to unite various tribal factions within those own countries, and so Israel became the big bad guy. Now, over time, Israel has established peaceful relationships with Jordan and Egypt, and now with the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Oman, uh, Somalia, I think Algeria and Tunisia now have have come on board, and the Palestinians are upset about that peace. They are upset about these countries having peaceful relations with Israel, and they're working to undermine the peace accords uh, that uh, Donald Trump was able to negotiate between these countries and Israel. And one way to do that is to make themselves seem more like victims, This leads to the present situation. Uh, This is the Ramadan period. Ramadan is a period of fasting during the day. uh, and Then you you have celebrations at night. And there is a territory within Jerusalem that Israeli courts, which have, by the way, been very sympathetic to the Palestinian people, uh, declared this particular territory to be Israeli territory and allowed settlement of, of Israelis in this area. And the Palestinians have been congregating outside a gate. I think it's the Damascus Gate, I I think. Don't hold me to that. Uh, And they've been, during Ramadan, uh, the Israelis told them to stop congregating there because there's been spillover violence into this neighborhood where Israelis are are moving in. And it set off conflicts where Hamas began firing rockets. Now, what you don't get in this country is that on a daily basis, Hamas tends to fire rockets into Israel. In the last few days, it's been about 700 rockets. This isn't anything new. This happens. But they've escalated now, and part of the reason that they've escalated this is because uh, there are elections that are going on within the Palestinian territory, and Hamas is vying for more power, and they need the Palestinians to back them by showing they're the big bad who can take on Israel because they're desperate to win some elections. Uh, the, the the Palestinian leader, what is it, Abbas, has it had wanted to have the elections. That, that it looks like the elections are on, and the, the uh, Hamas wants more power. Hamas is a terrorist group, but also has a political wing, kind of like the IRA did. On top of that, you've got all of this willful agitation to try to break up the peace agreements with the UAE and Bahrain and, and Egypt and Jordan and, and uh, the, the other countries that have sided with Israel. And so they've got to they've got to generate some international outrage. Now, much of the American and international media is sympathetic to the Palestinians in large part because they are of the left. You do have to understand that the Palestinians since the Cold War and the Soviet Union have embedded themselves and their cause within the hearts and minds of the left, uh, socialists around the world have loved them because Israel sided with the United States and as capitalist. Uh, so Palestinians are always the victim pay no attention to the daily rocket barrage on Israel. The Palestinians are always portrayed as the victim. There is a massive PR campaign 
uh, on behalf of Palestinians around the world with left-wing organizations and left-wing media outlets. The fact of the matter is Israel is not on a regular basis firing rockets into Palestinian territory. It's Palestinians on a daily basis firing rockets into Israeli territory. Uh, to give you an example of, of the, the PR campaign that's out there with the left, uh, Israelis, it is Jerusalem Day also in, in Israel. It's a big celebration, the, the uniting of Jerusalem. They celebrate it. Uh, Hamas dared to tell Israel not to celebrate it this year. They went ahead and celebrated it. That was the next provoking event. Uh, Hamas, a terrorist group, tries to tell Israel, don't celebrate a national holiday this year because we're going to be offended. They celebrate it. It's during Ramadan right now. That's why Hamas didn't want them to celebrate it. So they do it anyway. So Hamas starts firing rockets. Well, the Israelis are having the celebration of Jerusalem Day. They're at the Wailing Wall, uh, as close as they can get to the Solomonic Temple, where now the Dome of the Rock is, and a tree gets caught on fire by fireworks. International members of the press, blue check marks, say, look, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Gold Dome, is on fire, and the Israelis are chanting as it burns. That went viral on the internet, but it wasn't the mosque. It was a tree that fireworks got set on fire. Too late, damage done. Hamas begins a volley of rocket attacks and escalates the war. As I'm sitting here talking, the Associated Press has just released an alert on this situation. Uh, Hamas says an Israeli airstrike killed its Gaza City commander, the highest-ranking militant to be killed since the 2014 war between them. Militant group Hamas confirmed its Gaza City commander was killed. Basa Misa was the highest-ranking military figure in Hamas to be killed by Israel since the 2014 war in Gaza. In a statement, the armed wing of Hamas said Isa was killed along with a few of his fellow brothers of leaders and holy fighters during the fighting that's been going on for two days in Gaza. The Israelis have a Western-capable military. Every man, woman, and child in Israel joins the military at some point, well, I guess when they're 18. Uh, they take their defense very seriously. They are surrounded by terrorist groups that do not recognize their legitimacy. Those terrorist groups are backed by countries like Iran that declared death to Israel and America. What are they going to do? It's their territory. They don't care that the American military or the American media is deeply sympathetic to the Palestinians. The history is this has been since time immemorial Jewish territory until Hadrian threw them all out and designated it Palestine. And the different people who floated in and, and settled down over time became Palestinians. The Jews spread through the world and eventually came back home. Uh, to a land given to them by God himself. And it doesn't matter that the world doesn't like it. That's their territory. They've got historic archaeological claims to it. We don't call the people who live there Canaanites. They're Palestinians, a word given to them by a Roman emperor who first began to ruthlessly persecute the Jews. If you got to pick a side on this, you pick the Israeli side. It's a no-brainer against terrorists like Hamas. The Israelis don't have clean hands in some of this, to be fair. But by and large, what's going on here is agitation by Hamas seizing this moment and this opportunity to try to destabilize peace between various Middle Eastern countries and Israel that have had peace. This is a pressure campaign on them, and the American media is willfully being used as a pawn by Hamas to try to break out war in the Middle East, all to get rid of Donald Trump's legacy and destabilize Israel, which is what the media always likes to do when it comes to Israel.